It's amazing to consider just how ancient our world truly is, how vast and endless our history is, and how many fruitful cultures exist and have existed in millennia gone by. Extraordinary secrets hide in plain sight, mysteries for which the answers have been lost to time. Will we discover them, or will they fall into the unknown forever? Only time will tell. A thousand-year-old mummy found in Egyptian sewers. Egypt is famous for its extensive collection of relics and signs of great human achievements. In its golden age, the ancient nation had a rich culture brimming with art, language, mythology, structures and architecture, some beyond our modern understanding. For centuries, it has been a special place for archaeologists hoping to uncover new secrets still buried beneath the desert sands. Somewhat unfortunately, as the world advances, the many lost relics can end up destroyed or tarnished. Egyptian authorities made a surprising discovery in the sewers, noting that sarcophagi and ancient priceless artifacts had been found. It's thought that these relics ended up in the sewers because of illegal traders who built a tunnel to rapidly rid of their illicit goods rather than be captured with them in their possession due to the strict laws prohibiting the illegal trade. Through a thorough investigation, archaeologists and authorities were able to uncover that the mummified bodies were stolen from the tombs in a small remote village on the outskirts of the Egyptian city of Minya. The tombs stand by the western bank of the life-giving Nile, which in itself connects the people of the past to those of the present. The sarcophagi were taken to the Egyptian National Ministry of Antiquities, where they are now kept safe and secure. The ministry had its scientists and archaeologists analyze the mummies and dated them to be, at their youngest, 1,600 years old, going all the way back to the Greco-Roman period of Egyptian history when their specific type of mummification and wrapping was practiced. Because the art of mummification changed through the passage of eras, archaeologists are able to deduce when a mummy might have departed from life based on how the body was prepared and the way it was wrapped. These mummies in particular were wrapped heavily in linen and scarcely had any remaining organs. According to reporter Nada Dayar, the sarcophagi the police found the mummies in were floating in sewage and their conditions were so bad that they had disintegrated. The report goes on to state the mummies had been those of women, as their sarcophagi had illustrations of evidently feminine figures, brightly coloured even after all these centuries. There have been endless efforts made to try and fix the mummies to their former state before they were tarnished by the waste of the sewers. The Book of the Dead Last year in March of 2022, a surprising discovery was uncovered in the dark depths of a tomb in the Steppe Pyramid of Djosa, an alleged Book of the Dead. The book is actually no book at all, but instead a 2,000-year-old ancient scroll. The scroll reaches 52 feet in length. Part of its contents are vivid drawings of old gods and glimpses into what might await us on the other side. The name given to the book by archaeologists was the Waziri Papyrus, after the Secretary-General of the Supreme Council of Antiquities, Mustafa Waziri, who first found the scroll. The scroll was found inside a sarcophagus being excavated by the archaeologists. Interestingly, the mummy inside it was called Amose, given that the Waziri papyrus references an Amosi an estimated 260 times in the text. Amosi was in possession of immense wealth to commission and be buried with such a rich, lengthy document. However, other than the Waziri papyrus and the immediate belongings found in his tomb, little about Amose is truly known. The scroll showcases many illustrations of Osiris, the god of the underworld. The document itself is composed of various different texts surrounding afterlife myths, various spells and guides as to how to easily make the journey from life to the afterlife. It's meant to make Amos's departure from this world into the next swift and painless with the use of magic. The scroll's title as the Book of the Dead was not given by the Egyptians that wrote it or buried Amose, rather it was known as the Book of Emerging Forth into the Light. Carl Richard Lepsius, a Prussian Egyptologist, created the term Book of the Dead to describe such documents. The Waziri papyrus is beautifully written in a sophisticated form of ancient hieroglyphs in a mixture of black and red ink, giving it an otherworldly appearance. The papyrus is spread throughout 313 individual chapters, which were carefully structured and arranged by its creators. The spells within the text are written extremely specifically, 
showing that whoever wrote them put time and effort to ensure they worked and would do what they were supposed to do once Amose passed away. Amose was not the only one placed in the tomb, as there are 250 other sarcophagi of varying quality and wealth scattered around the Saqqara pyramid. Since its discovery, the entire script has been carefully analyzed and translated into the Arabic language. Currently, the book in all its glory lies in Cairo's Egyptian Museum. The illustrations depicted on the papyrus of the underworld god Osiris are elaborate, with the deity adorning a glorious customary crown while the god sits upon a tall throne. The ancient Egyptians did not have one underworld deity, but Osiris is believed to have been the most prominent. He also had the power over the Nile, which then allowed for the living upon the surface to survive and thrive by having the river flood each year and grant good harvests. Drawings of boats and animals scatter across the pages, thought by archaeologists to showcase what made a good offering to the deity, as well as the way one travels through the underworld, which was heavily associated with rivers and water. It's even possible that the scroll contains a drawing of Ahmose and his wife, as there is an illustration of a man and woman honoring the gods, though this remains mere speculation. In 2021, a different Book of the Dead, this one only 13 feet long, was found. Somewhat fortunately, both scrolls were discovered in the same tomb, bringing into question how many other scrolls of this kind we may find in such old burial sites and how much valuable insight they may grant us into the past. This scroll, as the previous, was filled with spells to guide the deceased. Hidden Rooms in the Great Pyramid Almost 4,500 years ago, between 2,509 BC and 2,483 BC, the Pharaoh Khufu was ruler of ancient Egypt. During this time, Pharaoh Khufu ordered the creation of the Great Pyramid, a monumental display of power. Built completely for himself, the pyramid itself has more than a 13-acre base and originally had a 479-foot-tall peak. The construction of the Great Pyramid is astonishing. Over 2.3 million blocks of limestone were quarried, cut to specific measurements and then placed into the formation we know today. The Great Pyramid is regarded as one of the wonders of the ancient world. In 2017, scientists studying the pyramid announced that they had found a previously unknown void inside of the pyramid that's estimated to be around 30 meters long. The last time any kind of big structure inside the pyramid was discovered was in the 1800s. This new void was found using a process called muon radiography. This method utilizes cosmic rays to locate voids or cavities inside of structures. This new discovery is being compared to the previously discovered Grand Gallery of the Pyramid. The Grand Gallery is a 150-foot-long corridor that goes directly to the burial room of Khufu, the pharaoh that commissioned this marvel of the ancient world. This corridor is also around 26 feet tall and sits below the newly discovered area. Still, it is completely unknown what or if anything lies within this area and what it was used for. It could be several smaller rooms or one large area we simply do not know. This discovery is still huge. It brings us closer to finally being able to understand and even just know the various intricacies of this truly astonishing structure. This discovery was made by the Scan Pyramids Project working with the Egyptian Ministry of Antiquities and is widely regarded as the most impressive achievement of the technique used to find it. We know this large void exists, but we really know nothing else about it. Hopefully, it will potentially validate any ideas of exploring the Great Pyramid further and hopefully understanding it better. Maybe further exploration will uncover more secrets. Oxyrhynchus Papyri the Oxyrhynchus Papyri are a series of manuscripts giving insights into some ancient civilizations. In the late 1800s and early 1900s, two papyrologists, Bernard Pine Grenfell and Arthur Surridge Hunt, uncovered this collection of manuscripts in Egypt. As professors of papyrology, the pair research, analyze, and study ancient literature, presented and preserved as a manuscript that has been recorded on papyrus. Papyrus was the sole most common writing material used within ancient civilizations, including ancient Egypt, so those who study it are aware of the society, culture, and languages of these ancient societies. Grenfell and Hunt found this extraordinary group of manuscripts 
nearby to Oxyrhynchus, an Egyptian city and well-established archaeological site. In fact, many suggest that Oxyrhynchus is the single most important archaeological site to have been discovered to date. More specifically, however, the pair discovered these texts in an ancient rubbish dump. Researchers have successfully dated the Oxyrhynchus papyri to the Ptolemaic and Roman Egyptian eras, ranging roughly between 32 BC until approximately 640 AD, marking the Muslim conquest of Egypt. Despite the common connotations with the word manuscript, only an estimated 10% of the Oxyrhynchus papyri are literary, with the majority being comprised of documents such as codes, registers, census returns, petitions, court records, accounts, and even private letters, as opposed to being extended pieces of written work. This is not uncommon in papyrology, with correspondence and legal archives being as significant an element as the literary works. Most of the Oxyrhynchus papyri were written in Greek, with a great deal also being produced in Egyptian, using hieroglyphics, both hieratic and demotic. Some other languages seen include Latin, Arabic, Hebrew, Aramaic, Syriac, and Pahlavi, though in decreasing percentages. This presents a grand opportunity for etymological research as well as archaeological, delving into the history and development of each of these individual languages. Since their initial discovery in 1898, over 5,000 of these documents have been transcribed, a momentous achievement considering this information stemmed from boxes filled with tiny fragments and pieces, mere centimetres large. Despite so much having been achieved, this is considered to have only 1-2% to of the papyri accounted for, leaving a minimum of half a million manuscripts left to be prepared, transcribed and deciphered before the final step, cataloguing. Today, the Oxyrhynchus papyri are stored worldwide in respected institutions, including Oxford University's Ashmolean Museum. These documents have given us a whole host of information, from the written words on topics from maths to drama to religion to the practices and processes of ancient societies. So, what do you make of these interesting Egyptian discoveries? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.